Danny Masterson was raised in the Church of Scientology, and as a young adult, he became one of the breakout stars of that 70s show, which began in 1998 and ran for eight seasons. It was in the middle of this hugely successful run that Masterson is accused of raping three women between 2001 and 2003 in his Hollywood Hills home. But it took years for the charges to be brought as the three accusers were formerly members of the Church of Scientology. Masterson has denied all the accusations, which will now be heard by a jury in Los Angeles. Tonight, we take a closer look at the case against Masterson and a closer look at the Church of Scientology with a former church executive. How does the church handle accusations and what is their relationship like with law enforcement and what role will they play in Danny Masterson's rape trial? I'm Vinnie Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And it's right there in our First Amendment of the Constitution, the freedom of religion, one of the founding um, bases of this nation is that we all have the right to practice whatever religion we want or no religion at all. It's all our choice. It's part of being American. And, and with that come some, you know, rights and, and things that churches, um, have protection against when it comes to issues involving church versus state. And we see it play out time and time again, whether it's a Supreme Court decision, balancing the rights of someone to practice the religion or the rights of the church to do what they want to do versus individual rights versus what is and is not constitutional. We know there's advantages when it comes to taxes and things like that as well. So there's sort of this this, this relationship that exists when it comes to um, religion and churches in the United States and the government and how they get along and, and how things work out. And, and sometimes churches get in trouble like anyone else in the United States. I've covered um, cases involving my own church, the Catholic Church, and the, the cover-up of sex abuse cases. And I was in Massachusetts when the very first priest went on trial and I saw all those victims who came to the courthouse. And there was a case where the church was obviously involved in, in what happened because it was a, a priest who was the one responsible and who was convicted. But then there were tons of civil cases where the, the church was sued because of their role in all of that. So while we have a freedom of religion, um, churches don't necessarily um, have freedom to do and act however they want, right? So there's still um, certain responsibilities that they have. Now, let's talk about one of those churches that is in the news from time to time, the Church of Scientology. I mean, Tom Cruise is, is, is by far the most famous uh, member of this church and uh, is held in high regard in members of the church and is held in high regard uh, by people who go to his movies and are huge fans of his, and he has been for many, many years. Now, the Church of Scientology, like any other church, has rights and, and they also have responsibilities and can be held accountable for their actions in our society, despite the fact that they are a church. Now, Let's talk about another member of the Church of Scientology. His name is Danny Masterson. You may recognize him, you may not recognize him. That 70s show was his big breakout performance. Um, back in the early 2000s is really when it took off and he uh, became a, a star in, in Hollywood, very successful uh, actor. And this is someone who was raised in the Church of Scientology. Um, but tonight we're gonna talk about what's happening right now in Los Angeles, his rape trial, accused by three different women. And this is a criminal case, a, a criminal case. But there is a connection to the Church of Scientology in this trial, which is the reason we're talking about it tonight. One, Danny Masterson is a member, but that doesn't mean much. But three of the accusers are also members. And when it comes to this trial, there has to be an explanation as to why it has taken so long for these charges to be brought, these accusers to come forward. And that's where the Church of Scientology becomes part of the criminal case, not a party to the case, 
but for prosecutors, it's going to have to be an explanation as to what happened leading up to the point where we are in 2022 trying cases from you know, 20 years ago. There has to be an Why did that happen? Why exactly was there such a delay? And did the church play any role in all of that? And the answer to that question may depend upon who you believe in this case. So um, well, let's get right to it. Matt Johnson, Court TV crime and justice correspondent, has the story of Danny Masterson and what he's being accused of and what role the Church of Scientology may or may not play in all of it. That 70s show starred Danny Masterson back in the headlines and now in a California courtroom facing multiple rape charges. Masterson accused of drugging and assaulting three women in his Hollywood Hills home. Some of the alleged incidents dating back nearly two decades during the height of his TV fame. Could you stop asking me why don't we have stuff? <laughs> Masterson, now 46, is a well-known member of the Church of Scientology. His three accusers, also Scientologists at the time of the alleged crimes, claiming church teachings kept them from reporting the attacks, which is why Scientology will be a key component in the trial, an element Masterson's defense unsuccessfully tried to keep out during pretrial hearings. Defense then decided on cross-examination to introduce the book, The Introduction to Scientology Ethics, and directed Christine to be to particular pages and asked her, do you see in here where it states that you are not to report to the police? Former girlfriend Chrissy Bixler is one of the three alleged victims, posting on social media with the hashtag MeToo, quote, my church told me it's not rape if he's your boyfriend. My church was Scientology. My boyfriend was Danny Masterson. Bixler sharing more of her account in this sit-down interview with outspoken former Scientologist Leah Remini. The first thing she told me was, stop using the word rape. It's not rape if you're in a consensual relationship and you've been together for how long? Six years. Yeah. Bixler and the other accusers are expected to testify that the church works behind the scenes to protect prominent members. Jane Doe 1 went to the church. They told her not to go to the LAPD. She went to the LAPD anyway about a year later. Scientology sent a bunch of people in to lie to the LAPD and they killed that investigation. Tony Ortega is the editor of The Underground Bunker, a site dedicated to Scientology news. He has been covering the trial since the beginning as a pool journalist and says all three women are expected to take the stand along with some other big name celebrities. Lisa Marie Presley is on the witness list for the Danny Masterson rape trial. On this show, because it's two brothers who they want to kill each other, but you know, they both take a bullet for the other one. Meanwhile, Masterson maintains the sex was consensual. And after Netflix announced that he would be written off the ranch amidst allegations, he released this statement to Variety, quote, From day one, I have denied outrageous allegations against me. I have never been charged with a crime, let alone convicted of one. In this country, you are presumed innocent until guilty. I look forward to clearing my name once and for all. Masterson faces 45 years behind bars if convicted. Absolutely serious charges, a lot at stake uh, for Danny Masterson, obviously, and a lot at stake for his accusers as well. This is all playing out in Los Angeles. You won't see it on court TV because our cameras and microphones have not been permitted inside that courtroom. But we do have with us tonight court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson. Matt, great to see you tonight. Um, you received a statement from the Church of Scientology today. I want to know what they have to say about all this, because the allegations basically, it seems from the accusers, are because of the church, we didn't come forward with these allegations when everything happened. Right, because of the teachings within the church and the members, they can't report on each other, allegedly. Um, so we did reach out to the church multiple occasions, multiple times, asking them to be a part of the program. They've declined. They released this statement in part, quote, the church is not a party to the case and believes that it's inappropriate to comment on the pending criminal matter 
In the related civil matter in which the church is a party, we are confident that we will prevail as we know that it's slanderous allegations about the church and are completely false. The church has no policy prohibiting or discouraging members from reporting criminal conduct of Scientologists or anyone to law enforcement. Quite the opposite, church policy explicitly demands Scientologists abide by the laws of the land. The statement does go on to say that the church has a long history of cooperating with law enforcement. Any statement to the contrary to that would be false, according to them, in that statement that they provided us today. Okay, okay. So, you know, the allegations are going to play out inside the courtroom, and tonight during this program, we're going to get an inside look at the Church of Scientology. But let's talk about the charges and allegations mm -hmm. that Masterson is facing here. What, what is he looking at? Right, so Masterson is charged with three counts of forcible rape. Uh, in the complaint that led to the arrest warrant, his accusers are referred to as Jane Doe 1, 2, and 3. And here are the time frames for these alleged crimes. For count one, the alleged rape of Jane Doe that occurred on April 25th, 2003. In the case of Jane Doe number two, the alleged victim says that she was raped between October 1st and December 31st, 2003, that same year. While count three is said to have happened between January and November, a bit earlier in 2001. We have also learned that there are at least two other women. It's been reported that say that they were victims, but Masterson only facing um, the charges for these three women, these allegations in, the, in these three cases here. Okay, so what do we know about the trial itself here? Because this, uh, to me, this is, um, this is a, a big deal. I mean, a, a really big deal. You've got Harvey Weinstein trial taking place also, I think it's the same time, the same courthouse. It's a big deal in California. It's a big trial, a lot of eyes on it because of the celebrity factor, but also because people are interested in the church. Let's just face it, right? So if convicted on all of the charges, uh, Masterson stands to face a maximum of 45 years to life behind bars. The trial could last about four weeks, about a month. You mentioned it, Vinny, no cameras. No cameras. His attorneys worked very hard to keep cameras out of that California courtroom. In fact, listen to this. Well, we are objecting to the media requests, Your Honor, that are, uh, that have been, I understand there are many in the file at this time. Uh, we would object on the grounds that it creates uh, unfair prejudice for the defendant. This is a case that is being followed by the media closely. Now, as for the allegations, well, the church is named in a civil suit regarding harassment claims of the three alleged victims in all of this, and they made reference to that in that statement that they released to us today. Absolutely. All right, Matt Johnson, Court TV crime and justice correspondent. Thank you so much. Of course, Appreciate thank it. You. All right, so tonight we want to get an inside look at the Church of Scientology to figure out exactly how things work uh, in reality from day to day from someone who has been there and joining us now in Palm Harbor, Florida, former senior Scientology official and author of the book, A Billion Years. There it is. Mike Render is with us. Mike, uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We really do appreciate it. You're welcome, Vinny. So give us a little bit of background for people who don't know you, haven't seen you uh, on, on television in, in, your, in your program before. Um, tell me a little bit about your, the, your background and the Church of Scientology, when you got involved, what your role was, and then why you got out. Okay. Simply put, I was raised as a Scientologist. My parents got into Scientology in the late 1950s when I was very young. I was raised a Scientologist and had a sort of trajectory in the world of Scientology up to working with the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, joined what's called the C Organization, which is the reference to the title of my book, signed a billion year contract committing myself to achieving the aims of Scientology for eternity. I rose to the, be on the board of directors of the Church of Scientology International. I was the international spokesperson for Scientology. I was also in charge of its legal affairs department and the dirty tricks department of Scientology. Um, in 2007, I escaped after a series of of things that made me realize that what Scientology was and was doing was not what 
I had thought when I had come into it at a young age, um, and it wasn't it, it was no longer something that I could tolerate the abuses that were ongoing, et cetera. So I escaped. And then since about 2009, I have been speaking publicly as a whistleblower about the um, ongoing abuses that are occurring in Scientology. So give us some idea of how the Church of Scientology from the inside views the outside, right? And, and when I say the outside, I mean folks yeah. who aren't members of the church, um, you know, the, whether it's the system of justice, um, judges, lawyers, police officers, investigators, what exactly is, is that view like? Uh, very jaded. Everything in Scientology is predicated on the writings or the words of L. Ron Hubbard. He is the founder of Scientology, his word is the word of God in Scientology. You're expected to read or listen to his words, understand them, and then follow them exactly. Hubbard had a very, very bad uh, opinion of the judicial system, of law enforcement. Um, in fact, everything outside the world of Scientology has a derogatory name for in Scientology. It's called the WOG world, W-O-G. Everybody who is not a Scientologist is considered to be either ignorant, uninformed, or evil. And, you know, there was a reference in, in your opening piece to this book called The Introduction to Scientology Ethics, which was entered into evidence in the criminal case. That book contains a lot of the writings of Hubbard on this subject, including uh, an essay that is put at the end of the book uh, called A New Hope for Justice that says Scientologists uh, do never want to get into the hands of the, the civil or criminal justice system or into the hands of law enforcement because they are all criminals. They are all... Uh, intent upon doing bad things to people and that the only hope is that the internal justice system of Scientology can be used to resolve all disputes, crimes, disagreements. And that is the mindset within the world of Scientology. We handle things internally because we have the better answers than the world at large. And in reality, was, it, was there a system that was set up to handle that? Were there like internal administrators of justice? Were there lawyers? Did people come and plead their cases? Um, what happened, uh, you know, in, in the real world there? Well, yes, there is a very extensive system um, of procedures and rules and regulations and laws uh, they are categorized as misdemeanors, crimes, and high crimes. And you are confronted by what is called an ethics officer or a justice person uh, who makes the determination about whether you have, in fact, violated the rules and laws of Scientology and meets out the punishment. Um, it's a very, very... Uh, it, the system itself is designed to protect Scientology. Everything in Scientology is designed to protect Scientology. It is, in the minds of a Scientologist, the survival and well-being of Scientology is, is absolutely the most important thing on Earth because only Scientology has the answers to solving all of man's problems. So. Every, uh, everything is oriented toward what's good for the organization. So you don't want people going to law enforcement to report crimes committed by Scientologists, especially not prominent ones, because that will create bad public relations. It is also believed by Scientologists that to get in the hands of the criminal or civil justice system is 
a travesty that will result in only calamity. There will be no good that comes from that. Only dealing with situations like this internally, that is the only way that they will actually be resolved. Mike Rinder staying with us this hour as we dive a little bit deeper into what's happening in the Danny Masterson case and the um, role of the church in this criminal trial. In the meantime, coming up next hour. Big news in Stockton, California, as a community can finally take a moment to relax as an accused serial killer is now in custody. Tonight, new details about the investigation, the capture, and the upcoming legal battle. You don't come to our house and bring this kind of reign of terror. It was a holiday parade that quickly turned tragic. Evil has arrived and it's shown what it can do. Darrell Brooks is accused of killing six people when he drove his vehicle through a crowd of spectators. In a surprising move, Brooks waived his right to an attorney and instead will be representing himself. Our cameras will be inside the courtroom as a community searches for justice. The Deadly Parade Crash Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, 9, 8 central, only on Court TV. These exhibits indicate that the written doctrine of Scientology not only discourages but prohibits one Scientologist from reporting another Scientologist in good standing to outside law enforcement. So Scientology will be a part of the trial of Danny Masterson, the criminal trial. Now, the church is not charged criminally, but it's an important issue in the case because you're talking about uh, accusers who delayed the reporting of these alleged rapes. So as a prosecutor, you've got to, you know, you've got to explain that to the jury and there has to be a reason. And it seems that um, the church is going to be in the middle of all of that um, in front of this jury. I want you to hear something else from the judge. Again, this is from a previous hearing because uh, the cameras have been prohibited from the trial. Again, talking about Scientology doctrine being a part of the trial. If a witness says I do a certain maneuver, a certain item, a certain way of acting so I can go to heaven, does a judge have to find that there is such a thing as heaven to explain why a witness did something? If the judge looks at the Bible, says, okay, the witness believes in the Bible, so the witness is going to go believes that the witness will go to heaven. Does a judge have to make a finding that there is a heaven, that the Bible is true? No. Okay. Judge, not only, judge, not only does the judge not need to make it, the judge cannot make it. So once again, we did reach out and invite a representative of the Church of Scientology to be on the program tonight. They denied, but did send us a statement, and I want to read uh, more of that statement to you now. The church has no policy prohibiting or discouraging members from reporting criminal conduct of Scientologists or of anyone to law enforcement. Quite the opposite. Church policy explicitly demands Scientologists abide by all laws of the land. Any statement or allegation contrary to the above is false and dead wrong. The church has a well-documented history of cooperation and support for law enforcement. Moreover, anyone seeking to make religion part of this trial is doing so to divert attention away from any relevant facts. And to me, that's fascinating, right? The, the concept of is, is religion going to be used to harm the defendant like because he's religious? I, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, Great guest with us tonight, still uh, joining us, former senior Scientology official, author of the book A Billion Years, Mike Rinder, still with us. And joining us now in New York City, psychotherapist, host of Talking Live on Facebook Watch and the Bite Side podcast, Dr. Robbie Ludwig. Um, Mike, let me start with you. I read the statement from uh, the Church of Scientology. Um, they are saying that the church policy explicitly demands Scientologists abide by all laws of the land. Yes, but what they're not telling or not saying, uh, and this is a, a typically evasive statement from Scientology, you know, I used to make them on behalf of Scientology all the time. Uh, 
is that it is a high crime. I mentioned earlier, misdemeanors, crimes, and high crimes. It is a high crime, and I'm going to read this to you from the book that the Defendant's Council put into evidence, reporting or threatening to report Scientology or Scientologists to civil authorities in an, effect, in an effort to suppress Scientology or Scientologists from practicing or receiving standard Scientology and delivering up the person of a Scientologist without justifiable defense or lawful protest to the demands of civil or criminal law. Those are high crimes in Scientology. And for Scientology to make a statement saying that we don't discourage people going to law enforcement is absolutely 100% categorically untrue. That is the pattern and practice. There isn't a former scientist, the current Scientologists will tell you, oh no, that, uh, that's not true, because they're told to say, oh no, that's not true. There isn't a former Scientologist in the world who would not stand up and say, if anything happened, the first place I was expected to report was to Scientology, and specifically to the Office of Special Affairs, which is what I used to be the head of, and that matters then would be taken over and controlled entirely by Scientology. That means, were you gonna go make a report to the police? Hold on, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of this internally because if you get into the hands of the criminal justice system, you know what Hubbard says about that, that's terrible. And we're the only ones that can actually help resolve this situation, so we'll take care of it. That is what happens in Scientology. That is what happened to these three women, and that is why they didn't report immediately to law enforcement. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, put us in, into the minds of the accusers here, right? So, you know, you're a member of this church, you're a member of society as well. And everyone knows rape is rape. I think everyone understands that concept pretty clearly. No means no if I don't give my consent, et cetera. So what's the internal struggle with uh, potential influences from a church versus, hey, I've been violated. I need, I need to do something about this. Well, the women might have felt going to the church was a way to deal with it until they found it wasn't effective. And people who are part of a community don't want to be excommunicated. They wanted to they want to be loved. They want to be approved of. So the thought of going against a church or church member is probably a very disturbing idea. But when someone is raped, that's a big deal. It gets a woman to feel devalued. She can uh, self-loathe herself and, and feel post-traumatic stress disorder. So there's a need for resolution and there's a need to be heard. So if that isn't going to happen within the church, then they are rightfully so going to go outside of the church. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And they might have felt that the church was not viewing women in the correct way. I mean, there is this idea of rape culture, which sees women as uh, not really having a voice. They should be submissive. Maybe they should accept whatever men want to do with them, or they take responsibility for causing the crime. So I think it's great and very brave of these women that they went outside of their community, which I'm sure they were very attached to, in order to share their important story for healing and for justice. All right, guests are staying with us. We're going to talk more about what's happening in L.A. right now. The trial of Danny Masterson, a former star of that 70s show, accused of the rape of three women. We'll be right back. Red 50, 66. people are really going to enjoy, you know, Rooster and Colt on this show because it's two brothers who they want to kill each other, but, you know, they both take a bullet for the other one. Um, and, uh, and I think people enjoy that. 
That's a little promo clip from the Netflix series The Ranch. Danny Masterson was in it until he wasn't. Uh, his character was written out, but it, it kind of coincided with all of the controversy and what he's facing now in Los Angeles, which are rape charges. Um, still with us, uh, Mike Render, former senior Scientology official, author of the book A Billion Years, and Dr. Robbie Ludwig, psychotherapist as well. Um, you know, Mike, anytime we talk about Scientology, we're always talking about celebrities, but um, the accusers in this case, not celebrities, there's a lot of other people in the church, aren't there? Why is it that we're always talking about celebrities when we're talking about the Church of Scientology? Well, Vinny, it's because Scientology places enormous importance on celebrities. Hubbard in the early, in the 50s, uh, said that celebrities should be targeted by Scientology to get them involved because they create positive public relations for Scientology. Uh, people tend to follow their lead. So if you can get a big celebrity involved in Scientology and saying how wonderful it is, that will encourage other people to join Scientology. Um, this was a pretty successful strategy, frankly. I mean, it, it's, not, um, it's not silly, it works. The problem today, though, is with the amount of information available about Scientology, there are very, very few people who these days come newly into Scientology. It is shrinking, and that's primarily due to the Internet. Information kills cults, and information is broadly available. You Google Scientology, you Google any part of the subject, and you're going to get nowadays a lot of information that is pretty disturbing. And so, you know, you don't, haven't seen any new big name Scientologists come up or, or, or appear in the last decade at least. Uh, perhaps the only prominent Scientology celebrity to emerge in the last decade is Elizabeth Moss but, of Handmaid's Tale. But she was raised a Scientologist, so she didn't come in newly. Um, I hope that answers your question. I just wanted to add to something that Dr. Ludwig said before the break. If you Absolutely. Um, the, the point in Scientology about you, uh, you cause your own situation is cannot be overstressed. The wording in Scientology is what did you do to pull it in? The concept in Scientology that Hubbard came up with is if something bad happens to you, then you have done something bad to someone else that's similar to that in order to be craving that you are punished for what you have done previously. And that can go back to previous lifetimes. So if someone is claims that they were raped or a beaten up by someone, run over by a car. The question that gets asked by Scientology of them is, when did you rape someone? When did you run someone over with a car? When did you beat someone up? It is the absolute epitome of victim blaming. And it is very, very um, dictated by the, the practices, principles, and teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, which lay this out in excruciating detail. Again, every Scientologist that you ask and you say, what, is, what does it mean when you say, what did you do to pull this in? Every single one of them will give you the same answer. I did something that caused me to have the bad effect that I now have, and it was similar to the bad effect that I have received. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, I saw you nodding your head along. Um, I'll, I'll give you the final word tonight on all of this. Go ahead. So think about that if you are an opportunistic rapist. 
right? You wouldn't see yourself as a rapist or committing a crime. You would see yourself as having sex with somebody who might be unconscious or they came to your room or of course they wanted to have sex with you. There's an entitlement there. Um, there's not seeing the will of the woman. It, it's saying, um, I, you know, she wanted it and I gave it to her and I'm entitled to it and she sexually aroused me. So, um, and especially if there's a relationship there, there wouldn't be this understanding that rape can happen under those circumstances. So you have this perfect storm for a crime to be committed. Well, I want to say a big thank you. Uh, Mike Rinder, uh, the book is a billion years. Give us like 30 seconds on what you get into into this book, because I'm sure people watching now are very fascinated by your experience. Well, Vinny, it is the story of my life and how I got into and my experiences within Scientology and how I, how I ultimately escaped and what has happened subsequently. And it is uh, my hope that people will read it and understand that anybody can be uh, persuaded to do things that are against their best interests if they believe strongly enough in something that is promised. And Dr. Robbie Ludwig, I'd like you to just respond to that in like 15 seconds before we run out of time, that, that level of influence um, that, that a church can have on us. Yeah, we want to believe in a religion that helps us make sense of our lives. And if we are following people who don't consider the rights of others or manipulate certain beliefs for their own benefits, that's a problem. And I think we can see that in many different scenarios where people are almost brainwashed to believe certain things and they act in accordance with that belief system that doesn't serve them well or really other people well outside of their environment. Dr. Robbie Ludwood, Mike Rinder, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Great insight. Thank and you. And of course, we'll continue to track Danny Thanks, Masterson's sir. trial out in Los Angeles.